So to follow up with our conversation on directional terminology, where you're always comparing something, now we need to know what we're comparing. And that is done by regional terms. So I probably oversold it. Last video I said probably the most important. I would say it's the combo between that one and this one. Um, regional terms really kind of give you a lot of the things in your body. Like when you learn a region, you're also learning the names for arteries and veins that might be in that same area. Or okay, let's just dive into some examples. So like right here under the armpit, that's called the axillary region. Guess what the nerve there is called? It's the axillary nerve. The artery there, axillary artery. The vein there, axillary vein. You have a deltoid region here at the top of the shoulder. That muscle there is called the deltoid. When you're looking at learning the names of bones, muscles, vessels, nerves, a lot of those names are going to build off of those region terms. So really spend the time to understand the regions. Now, rather than making a video where I say this is this and this is this and this is this, which I think would be extremely boring, something D-O-O -O economics. I'm gonna go through and give some advice on some of the common structures that I give advice for because I've come up with some quirky way to remember them. Um, that's exactly what you wanna do. Come up with some way to remember the structures. Another thing that I, I legitly have done this is make um, flashcards, but they're not front and back. You put the term on one side and then the common term on um, another card and then you mix them up and then you have to try to pair them and then you can lay them out as a body and see how they compare to each other so you pair them and then you like organize them based on like okay these are superior to these things is if you play go fish so if you really have some friends who enjoy being a little nerdy as well i totally have done this where you play go fish and you're just holding the cards and like do you have caudal and like you just switch back and forth you're looking for the pairs it's kind of fun all right so let's talk through some of the regions starting with some of the ones uh, up in the head. So if we're looking at um, the head, I always think of like the cheeks as um, if you blow a bugle, I push the cheeks, that's buccal. So the buccal region being the cheeks here. Some of the names, they're kind of familiar to you already, like nasal for nose. Um, if you're looking at oral, that means mouth. Optic is eye. Although now that I'm just talking, maybe I can draw this. So as you're doing some of these things, Ooh, bad art. Label it. If you have a significant other at home who feels up for you labeling them with a dry erase marker, you can go through and actually like, okay, oral region. And then nasal region. Or post-it notes and stick them on there. You can do post-it notes where you put it on yourself and see if you can find all the things. Whatever helps it stick. Uh, forehead would be frontal. Ooh, I love this one. The chin, like if I'm thinking a lot, I sit there like this and I'm being mental. This is the mental region. And so you can just draw it out and label things. That's another way to do this. Let's go through some other fun ones that I think might be helpful. So I talked about um, deltoid for delt, like the delt, where the delt muscle is. Um, but let's talk about some more th bones. So if you're looking at like leg, the top part where the thigh is, that bone there is the femur. The region is femoral. So I do want to have that conversation. There's a difference between regional terminology. So femoral, AL, that's a region. That is not the same as the name of the bone. So femur would be bone, femoral would be region. So do be careful that I have had that happen where students will answer when I say, what is this region? And they'll give me the name of the bone. You see that again with like patella is the name of the bone for the kneecap, patellar would be the region. And so if you're writing the name of a bone, well, that's not a region. So be careful of some of those where they are going to sound very similar, but one is a region and one is a structure within that region. Uh, another really fun one is popliteals, the back of the knee. The trick I use for that is I think if you pop out your knee, the back of it would turn teal. So popliteal, back of the knee, because it would turn teal. Carpal, for a wrist, tarsal would be ankle. Um, the names are similar. So I think carpal, because that starts with a C, is sooner in the alphabet. So that's going to be the one that's up higher than tarsal that's down on the ankle. So you find things kind of relate the terms to help them stick a little bit more. Another thing that you want to do to get it to stick is to try to use it every day. So as you're going to like maybe the car, you grab the handle with your hand, but oh, I'm using my, my palmar regions touching the handle, or I'm flexing my digital regions around the handle. So you're naming some things. If you are you know, bending at the waist to pick up something, oh, I'm bending from the lumbar region. 
start kind of putting the language to what you're doing throughout the day versus just waiting for a formal study session. So hopefully that helps as well. All right, another part of regions that does throw students off that I wanna show you is uh, in the abdominal area, we make a grid system because there are a lot of organs within there. Another thing to point out is whenever you're doing right or left, you always do it for your patients right or left. Now, because I'm writing on a light board, it does flip, so I have a really hard time telling you which side is right or left because it flips for me. So just be aware as you're looking at me, my right would be on the left side of your, like of what would be your left. So you're never naming them for what your right or left would be like sitting over, it's always what your patient is. And I know it's a little bit hard for students when they're first starting out, so what I usually recommend is take your textbook, turn it around and lay it on your body, and then look down at it and be like, oh yeah, this is my right, and then put your hand over it, and then kind of work your way through it that way, and I think that helps. So I'm not gonna prob I'm not gonna write right or left here because it does flip things, so I'm, I, I just spoiled all the, mus the like magic behind my art, right? Like, cause it looks like I write backwards, but I don't. Anyway, um, I wanna at least go over what the grids mean. So when we're looking at some of the roots, they um, will repeat a lot. So if we see epi, that means above. So epi is above, and so if you see epi gastric, gastric means stomach. So you're saying this is above your stomach. All the way at the bottom, you would have a hypogastric. That's below stomach. Here-ish, it would be where you find your belly button, so this will be your umbilical region. What used to be attached to the belly button? Yeah, the umbilical cord. Make the stories that go with the terms. So it's not just like memorize that that's umbilical. Ask yourself, why is it called that? Oh, because the umbilical cord used to be attached to it. Now if we go off to the sides here, we will have up here the region that's right below the ribs. So we're like right here. And so we'll see that hypo again for below, so we're below ribs, and now we're gonna use hypochondriac. Chondro, the contract part for the ribs, so we're below ribs. We have iliac. You also sometimes see this is referred to as inguinal. Depends on um, terminology, textbooks. Iliac is like for ilium. Ilium's a bone here, so that helps there. Uh, inguinal is like, think inguinal. That actually gets a little tricky, so let me draw that really quick too. So if you were to look at kind of this region here, like so basically where my screen cuts me off, um, right? So like we take like a waistband, like where your waistband's at, and go across your hips. You would end up with a triangle over here, a triangle over here, and then you would have like a region here with pubic hair. So this is your pubic region. So pubic for where pubic hair is. So this is ge external genitalia. Pelvic would be that region kind of center and above that. Between where the hips are, the little V's here, that's where you'll see your inguinal. And so it repeats over there as well. And so inguinal kind of laying over top here. You would see pelvic and hypogastric also being as relatable terms. Now you, typically what I end up seeing is they use this and this for when you're dealing with internal stuff and you see more pelvic and inguinal for external. But they do inter interchange. Um, trick I use for inguinal is I think ingroinal. So you're like right in that area that you would consider as groin. Okay. And then the, these repeat on this side. There'll just be a difference of right versus left. And then the last one here is gonna be our lumbar region. So it's low back. So that's another thing too, is also be aware of the fact that some of these terms are one-sided and some are on both. So like, for example, we have where the scapula is, that would be the scapular region, that's specifically to the back. But if we look at something like thoracic, that's all of the upper part of the torso all the way around. Lumbar would be another example. You can see it here in the front, but it's also lower back down here. So a couple of things and pieces of advice that I gave in this. Uh, hopefully you use it, um, study with the flashcards, maybe do it as a game, uh, label yourself, label somebody else, and also be aware of kind of making sense of it by relating it to other structures you might already know, like the umbilical cord or the femur bone. All right, everyone, as I mentioned, I didn't go through all of them, but at least it gives you a good start on how to study these regional terms and at least gives you some hints on some of the common ones that at least I've come up with different funny ways to remember them. All right, everyone, thanks for watching.